Oh, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? How's it going? It's Dan here from Crown OR. Um, we are just doing a quick GIMP tutorial here. Uh, I'm going to do this for one or two reasons. Um, ordinarily, on a Sunday, I will be uploading a devlog, but we're currently in a situation where um, there is work going on, but none of it's finished to the point that we can show you, so there won't be a devlog this week. And also, because my GIMP tutorial is currently the highest viewed video on my channel. So clearly that means people like learning about GIMP, so I thought I'd just do some quick tutorials. Uh, so on, on we go. So this is the uh, this is a tutorial about animation and I'm just going to teach you how to do the uh, the sort of animation things that you can do with GIMP. Uh, now I'll be honest with you, GIMP is not particularly good for animation, it's not really designed for it, but you can use it for that. Um, in fact, the intro to this to all of my videos, um, that flash screen was all animated in GIMP. Um, and I'll show you basically how you go about doing that um, and talk you through the, the whole thing. So without further ado, let's crack on. So we have our GIMP project here, um, which is open, and yours should look fairly similar to this. If you haven't got GIMP, uh, just go to, just type GIMP into Google, and you'll, depending on your search history, uh, you may very well come up with some different results, but hopefully in amongst all there, you will come up with uh, the, the, the graphical image manipulation program. There we go, I remembered. So you should hopefully come up with that um, and download that. It's completely free. And when you launch it, you should get something similar to this. If you are missing any of these, such as the palette editor, the navigation, and the layers, we won't necessarily be using many of these, but we will definitely be using um, the layers section and we will possibly be using this section, or we will definitely be using this section here. So if you're missing those, you can go into Windows up at the top here. And you can see, where are we, um, recently docked, dockable um, dialogues, there we go. And you've got all the different things, so you've got the tool options there. And then layers will be somewhere in there. Well, there's layers, nice and straightforward. And then you've got navigation, which is down here somewhere, I believe. Like, oh, there it is, navigation, which is the one down the bottom here. This just gives you an overview of the thing. And then palette editor, I think that's there as well, palettes. And there we go. So that's where you'll find all of those. Um, and these are just the standard ones that I have, and I think they're fairly standard anyway. But here we go. So on with the animation. First of all, what we are going to do, I'm going to get some sprites from a game uh, that we're currently working on, uh, me and a friend of mine called Josh, um, and he did these, this is the running sprite for our game, so I'm just going to get these just so that I can show you, but you can do this all yourself and I'll sort of show you how you how you go about doing this. So what we're going to do is going to open as layers and go into the C drive, do, do, do. just give me two seconds, I, I, I theoretically should have done this first, but I thought I might as well do it now. Where are we? Gimp tutorials, Gimp tutorials, Gimp tut, there we go. Animation, and bang, we have them all there. So I want all of them. So if you hold control and then just click on all of those, it'll let you click them all and bring them all in as individual layers. Now, as you can see, it's quite tiny, um, but we can zoom into that. And what you do is you hold the control button and then on your center wheel for your mouse, you can just roll in and zoom in and make it massive or not you know to a decent size there we go and if you don't have a control wheel on your mouse you can just do it down here in the navigation window so it's quite handy to have that and you can see that if we just click that it's not as fluid but it does work perfectly fine um, so here we go so this is uh, the animation of our little dude or it's one frame of our animation so what we can do, we can cycle through. It looks a little mushy at the moment, and the reason for that is because, there we go, right. Each one of these down this side is an individual layer, and if you click on the eye, that then shows that layer. Now, if we click this one here, it then puts that layer on top of that one, so suddenly you can see that he kind of does that, and there we go. Um, so when you have all of them as visible like this, it just turns into a big mush. Um, which doesn't look particularly good. Now, this is a problem with the animation suite on this. It doesn't have frames. Um, what it does is, for the animation, it just cycles through the individual layers, okay? Um, which in some ways is good, but in 99 other ways it's terrible. So the way you would find it is up at the top here, you can go to Filters, and you click on Filters, and you go down to Animation. There we go, fairly straightforward. And then across from there, you've got playback 
here. And if we click on playback, you see, I'm sure some of these other things do other things, but I don't know what they do. Now, a slight problem we're going to notice is that you can't make this window any bigger. You can grab it and you can make it bigger, but it will only still play the frame the size that it is, which is not brilliant. Um, so, you know, just bear that in mind. That's one of the many problems with GIMP. As I say, it's not really designed for animation, um, but I use it for animation purely and simply because a lot of the animations I'm doing within game development are generally quite small, so they may only be sort of seven or eight, maybe ten frames, something like that. And I find that the drawing package of GIMP is is very very good, and I'm very you know I'm fairly accomplished with it. I know my way around it, so I'm able to kind of just use it as a general general play around thing as long as it looks okay in GIMP then that's fine it should work quite well in the game so as you can see we've got play which is fairly self-explanatory step and rewind and so on and so forth and then we also have here we have some really cool things where you can increase or decrease the speed at which it plays back and then you can also go for the frames per second as well now if we play this back you'll notice all that's really happening I'll, I think I'll probably have to zoom in on this but all that's really happening is he's kind of bobbing up and down. It's not really properly animating. And that's because what it's doing is it's cycling through all of the different layers. And because these are PNG layers, uh, and I'll cover this in another tutorial, which will be going up today as well. Um, because it's doing that and there is a transparency on there, you can't really see all of the, uh, the 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 different stages of it because there's all that see-through stuff going on. So we're just going to get rid of that now. And we're going to... You have to do this every single frame. You have to treat every single one as a complete picture. Okay, every single layer has to then be a complete standalone picture on its own, um, which is one of the major downsides, again, with GIMP. Uh, not to beat up on it too bad, it sounds like I'm beating up on GIMP, but no, I'm not, I'm not just, that's what, it does have its shortcomings, and that is one of them. Um, so if you've got like a multi-layered animation, that can prove quite tricky to do. Um, not impossible, but quite tricky, and I'll tell you some of the other little tricks you can do to, to try and make that a little easier as we go along. So what we you need to do, we need to make this a complete frame on its own. So I think we're just going to pick a nice background, uh, we're going to pick red because that should stand out um, against the purple um, or maybe green no we'll go with a green we'll go with a lovely green that lovely green there mm. so uh, and what we're going to do we're going to grab the paint dropper thing and go boop and then fill the whole thing in in green and we're going to do that for every single frame so if we go up to here that selected it and I can go bang, and then you can see that that's coloured it in. We can't see that. Ah, and there we go. Now already you can see the difference because, you know, that is now a complete cell. And now that is a complete cell. All of the bits where you would be able to see him, the previous frame, like the bits under here. Because if you look on this frame, his foot's there. And then when we go to this frame now, his foot's raised. Because that, um, when it's a PNG, is see-through, it looks as though his foot hasn't gone anywhere. So that's why we have to do this. So we're going to do this on all of these layers. Uh, it's not going to make any difference. You're not going to be able to see anything. But as you can see on there, you can see that I've now filled all of those in. So as I click through them, they all now become complete frames. So when we actually go to animate this now, filters, animation, and playback. When we press play, I'll get this somewhere. There we go. So I can zoom in a little bit nicer on it you'll be able to see that he now looks like he's kind of walking and we can play around with this as well we can do it slow motion or we can make him run like a like a mofo um so yeah and that's that's the animation it's not particularly good animation suite but it does work really really well for just trying things out and if you're doing very short animations I wouldn't recommend trying to do a, a full film or something like that in this, or even even sort of a five minute animation. But if you're just doing little bits of game animation and you need, you know, for your sprites and you just need uh, sort of five or six frames, it's definitely a way to go. But what you have to bear in mind is that you have to complete every frame. Everything has to be a complete full picture so that you can see it animate. And then you would then go and remove all the bits you don't need to, to make them PNGs. Again, I'll cover that in another tutorial. So, yeah, so now we have these. Now, let's say, for instance, you have sort of repeating frames. I should really have thought about how to do this, but uh, I'll just give you a general idea. So, say, for instance, you've got one 
you've got a multi-layered image. So let's say, for instance, these three layers here, so frames 0, 1, and 2, that's one frame, and then 0 frames 3, 4, and 5, that's another frame, and then 6 and 7 is another frame. Um, so you've only got a three-frame animation that's made up of all of those. What you can do, you right-click in there, and you've got a new layer group, and we get this. And then what you would do is you then put these into that layer group, and you do that by left-clicking on it and dragging it into the thing, and then you can do the same with that as well. Boop. And you can see that that is now one layer. That effectively treats that as one layer. And then what you can do is you can go down here. Right, so we'll click somewhere else and we go uh, new layer group. Okay, and it's stuck in there for some reason. But anyway, there we go. And now we can put frames number five and number four and number three into that one. So you now effectively have we can we can minimize these to make it a little easier to see so we now that then becomes i mean this will totally destroy this animation but that's not the point the point is to show you that if you do have a multi-layered picture um what you can do is you can just create layer groups like this so i'm going to get another new layer group stuck it in there for some reason but never mind we don't know don't need it to do that let's hide that get me that small again get rid of these and then we're just going to drag these into here into there there we go and so we've got that and that into there and then that into there that into there thank you so now you can see we actually only have three layers so now it's only it's basically a three layered animation even though you've got all of the individual layers I don't know if I'm explaining this particularly well but let's say for instance you had a piece that had a foreground a midground and a background and you wanted to animate them all sort of separately or you wanted you didn't want it because because of the way it runs through each layer as a frame of the animation what it would effectively do when you tried to animate it is it would show it as frame one foreground frame one midground frame one background frame two foreground frame two midground and it would look it would just look really jerky and janky or what you can do is you then put each of these um each of the layers into a group and then if you want, you can then duplicate the group and you can then manipulate each individual frame. I like that. Now, when we go to animate this, that should just animate as three frames, all being well. Yeah, you can see frame one of three. So it's not going to animate properly because yeah, I didn't do this, you know, it wasn't set up to do this. But that just shows you that you can do multi-layered, multi-framed animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful, enlightening, entertaining, and all of the other things that you like. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so don't forget to check out our game. Uh, we, we've come on a little way from this dude. Uh, just doing running now. He has guns and all sorts. So you can check that out in the devlog. If you're interested how I got into game making, uh, I have a thing called the Game Making Journey um, series, uh, which is definitely worth a watch. So check that out as well. Uh, and keep checking back for the channel to see updates on the game that me and Josh are making uh, with the intention, hopefully, of launching that some point next year. So yes, so thank you very much, guys. Take it easy, and I shall see you next time. Cheerio now. Bye-bye.